Okay, next I want to address the net loader. Now, the net loader is another key class in the way that OSMF works, but I didn't need to show it to you before because when you're just doing normal stuff, you don't need to talk about net loaders. OSMF will just create them for you under the hood. Right? So what is a net loader? Well, again, we have a media element. Its role is to load something, right? Load a piece of media. It loads an image, a video, or a sound. And the way it does that is by using a net loader. But like I said, when we don't tell the media element or the media factory, however we're creating it, if we don't tell it to do anything special, it's just going to create a new net loader for us. But there's actually three types of net loaders, uh, three, three classes that inherit from net loader, I should say. So effectively, four types of net loader. We have the net loader and three inheritors. And the uh, middle one is the one I want to talk to you about now because that's the RTMP dynamic streaming net loader. So dynamic streaming is another capability of OSMF. Dynamic streaming involves two things. First, it involves querying the user's bitrate, the viewer's bitrate, delivering the highest quality video that they can watch over their connection. And it also involves doing that on an ongoing basis. So it's not just an upfront bandwidth detection, it's an ongoing bandwidth detection with seamless swapping out of video streams if the bandwidth changes. Okay? That's what dynamic streaming is. And OSMF supports that. In fact, I think this will hopefully blow some of your minds how easy it's going to be to do this. And this is why I'm teaching you about the net loader. Because in order to do this, we need to tell Flash not to use a regular old net loader. I can add optionally a second parameter. If it's empty, if there's no second parameter, that's when Flash just goes with the regular net loader and you don't need to worry about it. But if you want to implement dynamic streaming, you need to override that. So the way dynamic streaming works, we have the media element. We would point it to a URL resource to some FLV. With dynamic streaming, we would point it to a vector of dynamic re streaming resource items, each one of which points to an FLV and specifies a bit rate. I'm going to create a new dynamic streaming resource, pointing it to an RTMP URL, right? the address of my Flash Media server, the, the address that Akamai or Influxus gave me. Next, I'm going to want to create a vector. If you haven't worked with vectors yet, those were introduced in Flash Player 10. Those are typed arrays. Um, if it intimidates you, it, you know, I understand why the syntax might, but it shouldn't. It really is like working with arrays. It's just seeing chevrons on the left of the equal sign, I think, throws people off. Uh, but you create a vector of dynamic streaming items. And in this case, I'm going to restrict it to three items. Then for eat, remember I said the vector is like a typed array, so I'm just going to talk to it. Vector 0 is a new dynamic streaming item. I'm going to point it to a video file name and tell it to run at 1.5 megabits. This is the, the video that people see if they're connecting with at least 1.5 megabits. Then in the next slot in the vector, I'm going to create another dynamic streaming item. I'm going to point it to the low video, which will be associated with 400 kilobits. And then finally, same thing with a medium video. Okay, So I've created effectively an array but it's a vector of these dynamic streaming items. Now, if you go back, you'll remember I created the dynamic streaming resource up front. Now, I talk to that resource. I tell it its stream items is that vector I just created. I then create a new video element off of that resource, not just a simple URL resource pointing to an FLV. And so taken together, this is how you'd implement dynamic streaming in OSMF. Is it restricted to three bit rates? No, it's whatever it is you want to do. Now this, remember I said, uh, you know, the simplest possible video player, that was six lines. That's not that much different from hand coding it yourself in ActionScript 3, that's about six lines. This is way more than six lines if you try to code it yourself, right? And it comes right out of the box, right? So. Oh. oh, well, okay. Not the best experience because of the way I'm handling layouts, but you guys see it picked up higher bitrate. It swapped out to a larger video and then swapped back down seamlessly. Did you guys see that was seamless? That's pretty impressive. 